Hey guys, so today we'll be talking about something a bit different. Oh, uh, I guess we're not really talking. I'm talking, and you're listening to me talk. Woohoo! But anyway. Have you ever studied really, really hard for something, and then after it was over, you just felt exhausted? Like, you couldn't get anything done, the world was grey, everything was just boring, and yuck, you felt so unmotivated? Well, that can happen due to something known as academic burnout. Before we fully get into this video, I just wanted to give a quick disclaimer. I don't claim to be a psychology expert, and you should seek professional help if you need it. I'm just going to be speaking about my own experiences with academic burnout and also articles I've read. So basically, academic burnout or study burnout is a state of mental and physical exhaustion caused by a long period of stress. It can make you feel like you're watching the whole entire world go by while you're trapped out of it. You can feel unmotivated and tired all the time. You may have difficulty concentrating on studying or other tasks. You may also be very, very easily distracted. Burnout can also make you a lot more irritable. Sometimes you may feel like there is no point to what you're doing. And you may also want to avoid social interactions with others. While it is prolonged stress related to study that causes academic burnout, oftentimes the root cause can be procrastination or perfectionism. When we allow assessments to pile up before deadlines, stress is increased substantially. Stress is also very much increased when we put pressure on ourselves to get everything done perfectly. Another huge cause of too much stress, or not too much stress, but an unhealthy amount of stress, is overcommitment. You may be able to manage a plate that's a bit too full in the short term, but in the long term, it can lead to burnout. We are not machines. You are not a machine. Sometimes, cutting back on commitments is needed to reduce an unhealthy amount of stress. Everyone can handle a different amount of stress. It's about doing what's healthy for you. When you're experiencing study burnout, it is important to develop strategies to recover, as well as to avoid it happening again. I want to go over both of those, so firstly, let's go over some things that help with recovering from academic burnout. Number one, reassessing commitments. It can be really hard to say no to some activities. I know that, but you need to think long term. Long term goals, that's what we're thinking about today. What you have been doing has obviously led you here, so something has to change. Maybe you have something every evening of the week except Saturday. And your friend asks you to come hang out Saturday night. Sure you're free, and sure you can make it. But maybe you need a rest. And the additional social activity on Saturday night might tip the skill. But social activities aren't got to do with studying, you say. While that might be true, it's often a little bit too much that we often do that causes burnout. Secondly, learn how to study smarter and not harder. Maybe you weren't doing too many things, but you were doing things the wrong way. Working harder when you have more study is what leads to burnout. Working smarter is what leads to a healthier lifestyle. Studying smarter might look like restructuring how you study, finding a more effective way to revise, or figuring out what part of the day works best for you to study. If you're a morning person, then maybe studying late into the night is not the best thing to do, and vice versa if you're a night person. Another thing that helps with the process of recovery is to talk to a trusted friend or family member. Letting out some of the emotions trapped up can really help. If you prefer, it can be helpful to journal instead. You could write what is making you feel anxious or stressed. That might sound dumb to you right now, but trust me, it really helps. Then you could take some time off. It may not sound possible for you currently, but even if you have to go to school or uni, you could take a break from doing any other study for a week. It sounds like a waste of time and that it just puts you more behind, but pushing on in a burnt out state will only make things worse and have an unhealthy impact on your mental health. After recovering from burnout, your capacity will increase again, and you will be able to do more. When that happens, it is important to not jump back straight into what you were doing before. If you have assessed your commitments, you should then take action on reducing what you know you can't handle for the long term. 
build up to a healthy capacity. Now you can take these steps to help avoid academic burnout happening again. If you have not experienced academic burnout, which I hope is some of you, then these steps will help you to avoid them. Number one, take breaks. Regular breaks help with reducing stress. Go outside and take a breath of fresh air or make yourself a cup of tea. Scrolling social media for a break does not count and is probably detrimental anyway. Hint, yes, YouTube is social media as well. Okay, then you should keep a track of your stress levels. If you go through a period just before big exams, it's normal to feel stress. In fact, it's healthy to feel stress. It's a normal human survival response. However, too much stress is unhealthy. Only you know how much you can handle. At the same time, you should not always push yourself right to the edge of what you can handle. Being mindful of your stress can prevent academic burnout happening. And then there's sleep. Yes, sleep affects burnout and having a good amount of it helps you to avoid burnout. If your body is perpetually exhausted or you're in a stage of exhaustion, you're much more susceptible to stress and an unhealthy amount of it or unhealthy coping mechanisms with it. So get at least 7 hours of rest every night. Another thing you can do is to find something you genuinely enjoy doing. Then go do it. Find an activity or hobby that you love to do each week. This in its own way gives you a break. And it also gives you some variety in the dreariness of student life. Okay, this sounded a bit morbid, but you get the point. Okay, so those are some of the things that you can do to avoid and deal with academic burnout. I hope this video was helpful, informative, or educational for you. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Send a link to a friend who you think would find it really helpful. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.